preparing now to stream live. Okay, we're going to do it slightly differently today. So we're just going to start with a short uh, mindfulness practice as people are coming in to join. So in the meantime, eye... I'm going to now lead a mindfulness practice. So check that your um, body is upright. And do some relaxation of the shoulders. Rotating them back and forward. Turning your face to the left and right. Dropping your ear to the shoulder and rotate. Changing direction. Coming back to the center, feeling your bum on the seat. Check that your posture is upright. Your feet on the ground. And very gently, just swing your body slightly from left to right, and then right to left. Just connecting with the body. Feeling the movement in the swing. Coming back to the center and just slightly moving your shoulder to the front, one shoulder at a time. And this is really just dropping your attention into your body and connecting your mind to the body. And now coming back to the center and taking three beautiful deep breaths. Now taking one hand and placing it on your chest. And just feel the movement in your chest as you breathe. So let the breathing be natural and you're just feeling the movement, the rise and fall of the chest. By placing your hand on the chest, you are giving it a special amount of attention. Focusing on it. And if you have any sense of anxiety, tightening of the chest, this is very useful for you to connect with your chest by placing your hand on it and breathing into the space where your hand is. And feel the breath going to your chest especially where the area of your hand is. And now moving your hand onto your abdomen and breathing into your abdomen. Feel the warmth of your palm against the abdomen.
Now taking the other hand, placing on your chest. And feeling your breath. So if your abdomen is feeling tight or your chest is feeling tight, you can place your hand on either your chest or your abdomen or both. If there's another part of your body that feels tense, tight, you can also do the same by placing your hand on that part of the body and breathe into it. So this way you're sensing to that part, feeling the touch your hand against the skin of the part of the body that's calling out to you for your kindness and attention. So those of you who may sense some tightness in the shoulders, place your hand on one of the shoulders and breathe into that part of the shoulder. Change your hand over to the other shoulder and breathe into the other shoulder that you may feel tightness. And now place your hands on your lap or if you have another part of your body that has any pain sensation, you can place your hand on that part of the body and breathe into it. Otherwise, place your hands on your lap. You can breathe into your hands or just observe your breath going through the nostrils or the rise and fall of your chest. Observe this beautiful breath. Feeling thankful that we're alive. And that we have sufficient energy to be seated up. Feeling that breath going through the body. And let it flow down your thighs into your legs, breathing out of your toes. And repeat that. So feel the breath nourish your body. The breath is constantly doing that, but we're not always aware. Now we are fully aware of the breath. 
Without this breath, none of our organs can continue to work. If you notice your mind wandering off, that's okay, that's normal. And just reconnect with the breath by shifting your focus back to the breath. If you notice thoughts arising in your mind, that's perfectly normal as well. So just observe the thoughts without engaging and then reconnect with the breath. Just be aware of whatever arises in the present moment. The thought, the tingling sensation in the body, the sound. Just to be fully aware. To be able to accept whatever arises in the moment. And connecting the mind back to the breath. And just watch this beautiful breath. And now focusing on three more beautiful breaths. Open your eyes at the end of the third breath. Okay, so welcome to the session on mindfulness at lunch. As you can see, I am one eye today, but I am still able to smile and functioning and conduct this session. So I have called this session today, Mind Over Matter. When you don't mind, it doesn't matter. So I don't mind having this one eye that's not able to function 100%, but I trust that it's going to get better because that's how the body is. It will recover. It may not be 100% to what it used to be when it was perfect, but it will recover to the point that it can still be functioning. So when we accept that over time, this body is going to degenerate, decline, and eventually death, then we are less anxious of things going wrong in this body because it's like an old car. 
After a few years, the car gets old and the different parts of the body will start to break down. In the case of a car, we can go replace many of the parts. In the case of our body, we can repair them. Not all the parts can be replaced, which means that it's even more important for us to do self-care and to look after the health of the different parts of the body. So when we have an illness, it's not to be the illness. There's so many parts to us that if we have one illness, that we look at it as, yes, that's just part of us now. We are not the illness. It's just one part of our body is not 100% or 85%, but all the other parts are working in good form. So thank you for joining me today. So yesterday was my operation on my eye and it is a removal of pterygium, which is a membrane that's growing over the eye. And I, when I asked the uh, ophthalmologist, why does this happen? And the answer was very simple. It's aging, contributed by the UV light. The UV light has the ability to damage our skin. And so the UV light has the ability to damage uh, the eye as well, which is why it is um, advisable to wear um, sunglasses, which covers over the glasses, not just the ones that look cool, like Ray-Ban, because there is still the UV light that goes in from the side. So the advice is to wear the sunglasses that go over whatever glasses that we're wearing because it has covers all around. So I started wearing those a few years ago when I noticed this membrane growing. So it slows down the growth of the membrane. It doesn't completely stop the membrane from growing once it started. So when I got um, to the day surgery clinic yesterday um, and they prepped me for the surgery, um, one of the um, surreal moments is being wheeled into the surgery the operating theater because you're lying down on the bed and all you see is all these lights going past you in the ceiling. It reminds me of watching medical uh, shows where somebody's lying on the, uh, on the bed and being wheeled in. So after getting into the uh, operating theater, um, they put the needle in here to prepare for any sedative that they were going to give me. And um, I said, no, I don't need sedatives uh, because I really like to be alert, to be completely aware of what's going on. And I think they were a bit surprised, uh, but they eventually agreed. And so when they had me transferred to the actual operating theater bed, the doctor was gonna give me this injection. And I think the needle was about this long but it was a very thin needle that had to go just below the eye to put the anesthetic in to localize uh, the numbness around the eye. And it was very interesting. I was observing um, the, um, the needle going in and I just sense in the very moment when the needle touched the skin and it goes inside. And actually there's very little pain so when we are able to apply mindfulness, we are in the moment. We do not start feeling the pain before the needle even touches the skin. And if we're fully aware, it's not even pain, it's a prick. It's like if you press into your skin now, you can feel this prick. Same thing with the needle. So what's really important is to watch the narrative in the mind that creates this concept of pain. And that's when you go, ayo, 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 it's going to be painful. But when we're just observing each moment, there is nothing until the needle touches the skin. And then you feel the sensation of the needle going in. And when the injection happens, that means the, the, the solution is being pushed in, then you feel some swelling because there is a bill of pressure. So mindfulness and helps us not to exaggerate what's happening in the moment. It helps us to be completely aware 
of what's happening as it's happening. And when there's nothing happening, to be aware that nothing is happening. So during the actual surgery, there was a lot of tugging in my eye because they were cutting the, the front of the uh, eye. And there were very uncomfortable moments. So I applied mindfulness to focus my mind on the breath. There were times when I couldn't focus on my breath because the surgeon's hand was uh, pressing against my nostril. Then I noticed that I had to open my mouth and breathe. And then I also focus on the tapping of my finger against the bed or against another part of the body. So this helps me to keep my mind on the tapping and synchronize it with the breath. So whenever things feel uncomfortable is to refocus the mind, not to have this dialogue, this narrative that goes on in the mind that creates stories, commenting on the discomfort, commenting on things that are not going the way we wish. So I hope the sharing of my experience helps you to take in every moment as it is, not to let the mind create the concept of pain, not let the mind create more suffering by all the narrative that is negative. So here I am. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Charles, for the comment. What's really important is that mindfulness works. That is not something that is just a concept and some theory, but it actually works. So I'd like to share with you, after coming home, the physical pain was excruciating. And I started to notice my mind having self-pity. Oh, why me? Why is this happening? This is so painful. They must have traumatized my eye. Why do I deserve this? And that is the narrative when I'm conscious of it that I have to stop and focus the mind back on the breath. Take a deep breath and bring it in to the breath again. And do it again and again and again because the mind goes into a complaining mode. And if we allow this mind to continue complaining, then not only we are experiencing physical pain, we now create mental pain, which is usually called suffering. The emotional pain that is caused by self-pity, negative narrative, complaining about the situation. Instead, is to accept that this is the way it is. My eye has been traumatized. What do I expect? It will be painful, but it will get better. And pain means my nerves are all intact. The nerves have not been damaged. Because if, what happens if there was no pain? It means the doctor would have botched it. It means the nerves would have been damaged, cut into accidentally. So when we have that mindfulness, we're able to see the silver lining of the experience. To celebrate, I could feel pain. So this is one time I really had to take an opiate, which is a painkiller, in order to cut the receptors in my brain from feeling the sensations of the physical pain. It was helpful because it enabled, enabled me to sleep. It was a level of pain that I don't, that it's not the normal level, and it was way past my threshold. And that's another thing with mindfulness is to be aware and respectful of our thresholds, our own boundaries. It's not about using mindfulness to be a hero, but to be respectful. So after taking that, that tablet, I was able to sleep and rest my eye and rest my entire body that are, that are all cooperating to help this eye heal. Okay, so now uh, I do have a few questions before I continue. Uh, 
Thank you for all your kind encouragement. Yes, there's a question here about the practice. Would like to clarify on why I experienced numbness on the chest while practicing mindfulness earlier. Very good. So when you place your hand on your chest and you feel numbness, can you breathe into it? Are you also feeling anxious? If you're also feeling anxious, it means that there's a lot of tightening in the chest to the point that you may feel numbness. So as you breathe into your chest, see if it relaxes. But if there is a continuing numbness in the chest, then please go see a doctor and have it diagnosed. If it's a momentary thing, then it's probably just very tight muscles here due to some anxiety that you may be experiencing. All right, I have a question here that has been posed. Yes, it's the same question. So I hope I've answered it, Eileen. And I have another question here on wage freeze, hiring freeze. Okay, I will answer that uh, in a short while because it's a different topic at the moment, although there is some emotional uh, anxiety that could be associated to that. So thank you for that very good question because it's very current, very relevant to our current day. Is my eye painful? Well, there is a lot of sensation in my eye because there are four sutures uh, on top of my eye to keep the membrane that's being um, grafted onto my eye. So I can feel scratchy, uh, like as though there is some dirt in my eye, some scratchy sensation whenever my eyelids close and rubs against a suture. So with acceptance, it is okay is when we don't accept that it's there and we start to complain about it, then it becomes annoying. So those of you who've taken mindfulness, acceptance is key to letting go. And speaking about acceptance, I got a HDB car parking offense. And it's a ticket that's gonna cost me $70. And I thought, okay, I did make the mistake, although I felt that there was a reason why I did it because all the white lots were taken in this car park. Uh, it was a, a car park with a gantry. And although it says there were three available lots. So I felt that those people with season parking were parking the white lots. So I parked in the red lot and I got a ticket for that. So I was gonna write to HDB, but I hadn't got around to it. So I went to sleep. At 3.30 in the morning, I think my mind had enough recharge or the brain had enough recharge and I woke up in the middle of the night. I sensed anger at the ticket or for getting the ticket. And that woke my mind up. Those of you who've taken the course would know that anger activates a lot of adrenaline into the body. So my mind started to feel very alert. My body started to tense up. And it was all about the fact that I had not accepted the fact that I got this ticket. So when I started to reconcile and says, okay, I got this ticket, I'm gonna accept it. I will pay this $70. Then I could start the process of letting go. So even just getting a parking ticket could cause anger to arise. And for most people, this may go on for days. But if we are mindfulness practitioner, we understand why the mind is not letting go, which is because we haven't accepted it. Then we have to apply acceptance and said, Aya, okay, it was my mistake. I took a chance. Okay, I'm gonna pay it. Once you have the acceptance, then I can let go. So whatever you are being provoked by, it's because you haven't accepted. And therefore you can't let go. So practice this. This reduces the amount of mental suffering that's caused by mental annoyance, irritability, and all that narrative that goes on. 
all that commentary is not fair. Why should I get a ticket? These people who parked in the white lots should have parked in the red lots. And then I would have had a lot. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, if not, I'm going to lead another practice. And this is the loving kindness practice that I really enjoy uh, leading. After which I will answer the question on wage freeze, hiring freeze and job cuts. And how can mindfulness help? So now let's close our eyes. Take three beautiful deep breaths. First notice the thoughts are in your mind. This awareness of what's preoccupying your mind, it's helpful for you to know what you're bothered by. And to process these thoughts, if you recognize a thought is something that is just a thought, then you can just overlook it. Don't give it any attention. If it's a thought that is about something that's happened in the past, then you can contemplate on it if you wish. On what aspect of it? is it that you can't accept or you don't want to accept or you haven't accepted it has happened to be aware is your unwillingness unwillingness or inability to accept that is causing this thought to ruminate in your mind if it's a thought of a suggestion and even an idea, then take note of it. You can study the idea later on. If it's a thought about the future, you can wait till later. So for now, we're gonna focus on our breath. And with the breath, to recite the words, may I be well and happy. May I be well and happy. So always start this practice with self-care. When you're happy, you can make other people happy. When you're miserable, you tend to make other people miserable. So that's why we start with, may I be well and happy. And if you have any part of your body that is suffering from an illness or you have a condition, whichever part of the organ, the organ in your body, then direct these six words to. So in my case, it's the eye. May my eye be well and happy. And we can still use the word happy or we can use the word healthy, whichever you prefer. And keep reciting the six words with that part of your body in mind. If you had numbness in your chest, you can say, may my chest be well and happy.
And you can switch from one part of your body to another part and keep repeating it. And now bring to mind someone you're grateful to. So in my case, I'm very grateful to the doctor who operated on my eye. So I'm going to wish him to be well and happy. And you can choose whoever in your life you feel grateful to at this moment. Now bring to mind another person or all the people that you feel grateful to, who has helped you in your life, who has helped you get well, who has helped you along your way in life, supported you, given you opportunities. So you can dedicate to them, may so-and-so be well and happy, either one at a time or string all the names up. So for me, I'm going to wish the entire team at Tan Tok Sing Hospital has supported me during the surgery. And all the people who supported me after the surgery and taking me to the doctor this morning for a follow-up consult. So remember all the people who have helped you each day and wish them to be well and happy. By doing this practice, it brings up joy, gratitude, that so many people in our lives contribute to our happiness, our well-being. If you have a foreign domestic worker, wish this lovely lady to be well and happy. She's giving you help at home. And all your colleagues in the office, the cleaners who keep the toilets clean, the streets, the pavements, the lifts in our blocks. May they all be well and happy. This practice is also humbling to realize that there's so many people are playing a supporting role in our well being. Their kindness, their care. And now bring to mind someone you love and wish this person to be well and happy.
And bring to mind another person that you love, you care deeply for, and wish this person to be well and happy. Now bring to mind everyone in your family and wish them all to be well and happy. Now bring to mind all your colleagues and wish them all to be well and happy. Without them, we won't be able to do our job. to be effective in what we do. So wish them all to be well and happy. And let's wish everyone in Singapore to be well and happy. And to have goodwill for everyone, to wish everyone on this planet to be well and happy. Regardless of their race, their gender, where they live, where they come from, their sexual orientation, everyone to be well and happy. This practice becomes very effective in helping us to remove prejudices, biasness from our mind. And now focusing on three more recitations with your breath, then opening your eyes. May I be well and happy. Okay. How is that practice for you? So there is a question here. Can I say I'm unlucky? Well, if you say you're unlucky, it means you are indulging in self-pity. Like, oh, I'm so lucky. I'm so unlucky. If you say, oh, I'm so lucky, then you are letting go of all the things that you usually complain about because you are able to see all the good things are, that are going on for you. Because our mind has this tendency to focus on what is not going well, what's not going right. So when we say, well, there's just one thing, there's so many things going well for me. Like I'm alive. Yeah, I have a, a slight issue now with my eye, but I'm alive. What's so unlucky? I am generally 99.9% .9 lucky. This is just a 0.1% unlucky. But to also remember, this is just part of aging. This body will have different parts. And if it's just my eye, well, that's much better than another part of the body that is more critical that is going wrong. And I thought about what happened if the doctor botches my eye? Well, I have another eye. So it's not as bad as if it was a heart because we only have one heart. So look on the bright side of things. And this is what we have to train our mind in doing. Oh, you're referring to the car park. Am I unlucky? Nah. It's just one of those things. I parked in the red lot, so if I get a ticket, I should say I deserved. And then there is more acceptance. Instead of saying, I'm lucky I got a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that question, Lily. Okay, um, yeah, I guess another way of putting it is I was very lucky other times. 
when I did park in a red lot. So there you go. Different way of looking at, at different things. Choose the more positive one. How are you feeling now after that practice? Welcome your comments. So there was a question earlier on. I'm going to take a drink of water first. How do we respond to the concerns about hiring freeze, possible salary cuts, job cuts, wage freeze? How can mindfulness help? So first of all, is it happening to me right now? There's all these ideas and things being talked about, but is it happening now? The answer is no, it's not happening now. So if it's not happening now in this moment, everything is fine. It's as per normal. Then the second question that may came up, ah, is it gonna happen in the future? Yes, it may happen in the future, but the future is not here yet. So is there any point in worrying about the future? Or better still, be prepared that what could happen? And I'll come back to this. So if it's really happened, there's a job cut or there is a a salary cut, it's really happened, well, accept it. Because if you don't, how is that going to help you? It will just make you angry, make you feel like it's unfair to you, all that narrative that goes on. If there's a job cut, maybe you might get a payoff. And with the months of payoff, do something that you have not been able to do in the past because you didn't have the time. Or go and voluntary no pay leave, which is what many of the airlines are asking their staff to do. Take this time off and pursue an interest. There's a difference between whether you really need the money or you want the money. And if you really need the money, look for another job that may pay you less, but it gives you enough money to live on. You may not be able to afford some of the things that you used to spend on. You can make that adjustment. As humans, we are very adaptable. The only time we can't adapt is because this mind refuses to accept the reality, the change that happens. Change happens when we get a promotion. Change happens when we get a pay rise. But because we see those as positive, our mind doesn't resist it. But when we interpret as something as negative, then we tend to resist it. So instead of looking at it negatively, to say that, well, changes are inevitable. I'm going to accept the change. And I'm going to focus on what is it that I can do going forward. So this is how mindfulness helps us to be able to rebound, to be able to adapt, be more flexible. As I mentioned earlier on, there's a difference between needs and wants. So let go of some of the wants and then we will need less money. If it hasn't happened yet, don't worry about it. But just have alternative plans made. If it happens, these are my options. Okay? Well, healthcare is certainly looking for more people, so you can always consider going to the healthcare sector at this point in time. Any other questions? Comments? I would love to hear from you. I can't read the ones on Facebook. Well, I'll check. Maybe I can. Oh, yes, I am able to read. Thank you for all your kind comments about a speedy recovery. I hope you like my new look. It's called the pirate look. See, have a sense of humor in life. When you have a sense of humor in life, 
things don't feel as bad. And that's what we need in life is to have a sense of humor. Okay, I have a question here or a comment here that the neck feels tired. Okay, I did the neck exercise earlier on, but I did start a bit earlier. So you may have missed that. So just give me a comment now, one word, how do you feel in this moment? So at least I know how to best complete this mindfulness at lunch today. Type of one word. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Christina, Christopher, Lily, Lequan, Helen. All right, so let's now do a closing practice. If those of you who are still feeling tightness in the neck, move your neck, move your head side to side and relax your neck. Front and back. Rotate. Do your shoulder rolls. Rotate forward and backwards. And if you still feel any tightness in the chest, place your hand on the chest and breathe into it. Focusing your mind on the area of your body that feels any tightness or discomfort. In my case, it's the eye, so I'm going to focus on my eye and breathe into it. Focusing on your breath and appreciating the presence of the breath. Appreciating your good health. If you still have a job today, appreciate that you still have a job today. Focus on being here today. Not next week, next month, next year. Live each day that you're in. Feel the beautiful breath. Practice letting go of narrative in the mind that is not useful by just coming back to the breath. The first thought you observe that you know it's a thought that would sadden you cause you to feel miserable or even angry or fearful. The moment you recognize that thought, shift your focus back to the breath.
Your happiness is one thought away. Drop back into your breath. And your earlier negative thought would just pass by. Poof, it's gone. Feel the beautiful breath going through your body, down to your legs, all the way down to your feet, breathing out of your toes. And the next breath, feeling your breath going through your neck, into your shoulders, down your arms, and breathing out of your fingers. And repeat it. And the next breath, breathing through your nostril, into your head, and breathing out of your crown. And the next breath, breathing in through your crown, all the way down into your neck, body, legs, breathing out of your toes. And the next breath, breathing through your crown, into your neck, shoulders, down your arms, breathing out of your fingertips. Feel grateful you have your breath and you can breathe unass unassisted. You have your health to live today. This is the only moment you can be sure of. So live this moment by being in the moment. Now focusing on three more beautiful breaths that are keeping you alive. Open your eyes at the end of the third breath. Okay, hope you're feeling more relaxed now. And to remember, your happiness is just one thought away. So whenever you see that thought that causes you to be depressed, angry, sad, let it go by switching your focus back to the breath, flowing through your body. And magically, those thoughts that used to depress you are no longer around. So keep practicing and you'll be happier each day. So live in the moment. This is the only moment we're sure of. So any comments, questions? Love to hear from you before I sign off. Thank you very much for all your kind comments and your appreciation. I think I will be a pirate again tomorrow. So I will see you, even though one eye is not working perfectly. But hey, life goes on. So I hope my appearance today inspires you that is not to let anything, that one thing that is not right in your life to prevent you from living this moment in the happiest way you can by focusing on everything that you can still do. 
Okay, so don't let your illness become you. You are still you. So what? You just have an illness. That's just the nature of life. Bye. Take care, everybody.